head coach Rob Smith of the Humboldt State Lumberjacks. It's National Signing Day. Coach, uh, why don't you give us some uh, ideas about what you thought of this year's class? Well, it's always an exciting day, first of all. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes into uh, what today is all about. It's, it, it's a great day for, for these kids across the state of California and up into the state of Washington to get a chance to, to sign their name to a letter and uh, become Lumberjacks. So we're, we're very excited about the group. I do want to thank my assistant coaches for all the work that they have done. We're short staffed right now. And uh, so we've had a lot of guys that uh, recruiting for the first time, and, and, and they did a great job in, in putting this class together. Taylor Mitchell and Austin Jacobs both served as co-recruiting coordinators, and, and uh, the visits that we've had, uh, the families that have come through and seen our campus uh, have been very, very complimentary and impressed with uh, uh, the organization of the visit and, and just uh, the setup and everything that they're able to see, and our current players. We've always said that we believe our players are the best salesmen for what it is we're doing here. They serve as hosts, they, they uh, entertain and get to know the recruits uh, and their families that come through. And uh, so our success today, you know, with, with those we've signed, a lot of the credit goes certainly to, to my assistant coaches, but also to our players for, for uh, what they've done in the process. Coach, we'll, we'll open it up to questions. Coach, what was it that you were looking for in this recruiting class? I mean, I think it's not a secret. You've got a lot of dynamic players and a lot of horsepower on this team, but also what we saw last year compared to two years ago, there are definitely things that need to be filled to, to support that cast. Absolutely. We, we, we approached this recruiting period and said, we've got to rebuild in some areas, restock in some areas, but we're going to do so from the front back. So it was offensive and defensive line, and, and of the 19 – uh, players that, that we announced today, 13 of them are either offensive or defensive linemen. And so, you know, we look at we look at this coming year. We, we do return a lot of firepower. We have our career rushing leader, our career passing leader, our career receptions leader, a left tackle that's been a three-time offensive lineman of the year in the conference. They're all going to be seniors. We got an offensive line that should start four uh, seniors at, at the five positions. So, and we've got a defensive line that we graduated. Uh, some good players up front. So we really did need to rebuild a little bit up front on both sides of the ball. We'll continue to do this. this we figure we're just over the halfway part when it comes to recruiting. Uh, you know, a lot of schools are done today. That's not the case here at Humboldt State. And it hasn't been the case during my time here. We will wait and we've held, you know, uh, uh, awards back so that we can kind of see, okay, who falls through the cracks, who's still available, all right? And really the advantage now I think swings to us that we're able to, to know that we can pursue someone and be aggressive in, in the recruitment and sign them immediately, not having to wait till a certain date should they meet all the qualifications. So we're a little over halfway done with our class, but uh, and we brought in a number of players at the mid-year, which again is, is uh, tremendously important for us. They're now you know, attending classes. They're going through the winter conditioning program. They'll be ready for spring practice when we begin that in March. So uh, there's a huge advantage anytime you are able to get transfers in where they can go through this period and, and you know develop the friendships and learn the system and and just establish themselves we'll be so much further ahead when we get back together in august because of having these players here at the mid-year period so i thought we did a really nice job in solving some needs at the mid-year and and uh, continue to do that uh, today and then a good you know a, a, a small but talented group of freshmen that we're bringing in, and that's also a, a group that we will add to as we move forward with the process. Uh, I've always said about the state of California, we'll never run out of available talent. It's out there somewhere in this state. Our job is to identify it, ultimately evaluate it properly, and finally sell them on the academic athletic benefits of, of attending Humboldt State. We have so much to, 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 to sell and to offer here. That Redwood Bowl, when it's full, is as good as it gets, and we fill it up frequently. And, and a lot of teams in the conference can't say that. So the, the support, the attendance, the game day atmosphere, all of those things, we got to make sure these recruits uh, get a sense of, of, of what they're stepping into. And for, so for those that did sign today, uh, I know they can't wait to be a part of that. You know, I'm sure you've been coaching 20, 30 years now as a head coach, and there's you know needs, obviously, in recruiting what you're looking for. Do you find it a little different this year as far as maybe not looking so much four years ahead or three years ahead when you're sitting on possibly 
the greatest graduating class in the history of Humboldt State football. We talked about that as coaches, and, and, and so it was it was a twofold approach to it. Yeah, we wanted to, 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 to point towards 2017 and make sure that we fill in the holes or, or, or answer the needs that we have for 2017, knowing that we should have a very good football team, certainly an experienced football team coming back. But at the same time, you look beyond that and you realize with your younger players and freshmen primarily that they're going to come in, many of them may redshirt uh, that first year, and you want to be able to have them in position to step in or compete this time next year. As those seniors that we talk about have now graduated, you want these freshmen, these younger players, to be in position where they can step in and, and compete by this time next year. So, uh, and I think we, we, we did that today, and we'll continue to answer that as we move forward. Coach, how much has the process changed from the first year you were here and you called a kid or you made a home visit in Humboldt State, maybe who, to, to now, you know, people knowing exactly who the Lumberjack football well, You got to remember, JB, that the first year I was here, I drove down from my home in Washington. First day on the job here, you know what day it was? National Letter of Intent <laughs> Signing Day 2008. Okay, so everyone was finishing with recruiting. We were just getting started. But, but to answer your question, yeah, obviously we have so much to, to sell them. We're 24-9 over the last three years. We can talk about playoffs, and players know that's a realistic goal for our football team. We can talk about conference championships, and the recruits know that's a realistic goal for our football team. So the response has been very, very positive. And we felt back in 2008, in those early years, that we had to educate everyone whether it be Northern California, Southern California, we had to educate them, not only to this, you know, about Humboldt State football, the level we played at, but Humboldt State in general. And now we feel that there's much greater awareness uh, of certainly our success, the quality of the football program that we have, and, and the, the, the benefits and, and the excitement that, that surrounds what it is we do. How much of the process, or have you learned, or has it maybe changed over the year or two, or just the whole kids that are right for Humboldt and, you know, both ways, a two-way street, a kid who's going to like Humboldt and also a kid who's going to be a good fit for not only this program but this university. That's always something that's important to us. We've got to look at these kids and say, is he, you know, Chris Peterson up at Washington calls them OKGs, our kind of guys, right? And, and, and we subscribe to that same uh, approach, that same philosophy. We want to make sure that the, that the players we recruit fit uh, what it is we're trying to build here at Humboldt State when it comes to a football program and fit in this area. Again, this is a unique area. And, and uh, again, the players, almost to a person that we brought up, they were so impressed with what they saw and what they heard. And, and, and uh, again, I think that, that speaks to the success we feel we had today. Uh, you talked about being halfway there with recruiting for this class. So who are the guys from here on out? It's the guys who thought they were going to the Pac-12 and it didn't work out, or maybe some late grades coming through. Can you talk about um, this back half of the recruiting season? It, it's really all of the above. Again, we're gonna, uh, we have another visitation set up in February, okay, to bring players in. There's a lot of talent out there and recruiting is far from perfect. It is an inexact science. And so there's a lot of very talented players that will fall through the cracks, are still available, still looking for a home. Uh, we'll continue to, to, to build a quality freshman group and continue to look to fill specific needs. But uh, yeah, like I said though, it, it, it's a situation where now you don't have to wait for anything. If you like a kid, you can, you can uh, go at a quick pace on that, and, and we will. And uh, uh, it'll be both, uh, uh, both junior college transfer and high school, with an emphasis towards high school, I think, con continuing to complete that class. We have a, a number of players that are, are, are committed that we can't announce today that uh, that will be coming in as well as non-scholarship players. Uh, again, I think it speaks to the uh, you know the, the attractiveness of our football program and university. Coach, for uh, I, I turn you loose. What? How would you? You've been coaching a lot of years. How would you describe or maybe your anticipation or excitement level for? 2017 season. You keep that second time. You've told me I've been keep, keep coaching a lot of years, so uh, it's it's very you're true. Very double light over there. No, yeah. Uh, again, we're you're always excited, always excited. But but certainly this year we have a senior group. I have 30 seniors on the roster right now as we go through winter conditioning. I've never had 30 seniors at any one time, uh, but it's 30 quality seniors. When you return a Jaquan Gardner, an Alex Kappa, a Robert Weber, a Chase Crevache you know, uh, John Todd, you go on and on with some of these players. They're, they're, 
for the most part, players that we've been playing with the last three or four seasons, our playoff team of, of 2015 was led by a lot of these players that are now, they were sophomores then, they're seniors now. So obviously there, there are high expectations, but I hope that we've reached the point where there's always high expectations each and every year. You know, last year we felt we fell short, you know, as we were the preseason pick to win the conference. Again, after our championship in 2015, we felt we fell short of that. So uh, again, there's a lot of work to be done. We've got to have a great winter conditioning period. We've got to get into spring practice and be very, very productive through our spring practice. We've got to take care of our business in the classroom and make sure that everybody is ready to go as this semester ends. We've got to have a great summer program uh, with our players in preparation for the season. Then we've got to come back uh, ready to go, stay healthy, get lucky, all that type of stuff. But uh, yeah, there's a, there should be great excitement for the Jacks in 2017. I'd like to have another question. So what does it mean for a recruit who's not on campus what is their responsibility as far as working out, getting in touch with Drew and your coaches on being Lumberjacks? Well, again, it, it uh, you know, contact us. Let us know. I, again, that happened today. All right, our phone rang today a number of times with players that uh, that maybe we had communicated with previously, and, and, and now things kind of fall into place. We've got a great situation here to offer uh, prospective high school graduates that are looking to play college football. All right, talented players and a great situation to offer transfer uh, players as well with what we have uh, coming back. So uh, again, we'll continue to work at it there. Again, we'll continue to look and, and we are gonna add to what we have. But uh, today's about the, the, the 19 kids that we welcome to the Lumberjacks. Again, welcome to the Humboldt State family. Uh, a number of them came in, we had seven I think that came in at the mid-year. Uh, the others signing today. What a great and exciting time it is for them and their families. And uh, with social media being what it is now nowadays and, and everything, it's so different than, than it was, you know, back in back in my day. It, it's just it's fun to see uh, them that day and the excitement. You see the pictures and you see uh, the quotes that, that that they put out Twitter, Facebook, and so forth. Uh, the excitement that they have for for uh, committing to Humboldt State. That from a coaching standpoint, that that's pretty cool. Well, Coach, uh, last one's just a statement. I've seen a lot of football at Humboldt State before you got here, so you might have been coaching for a long time, but I can tell you, whatever you do, it's not long enough. So keep it going, Coach. Appreciate Thank you, JB. One last question for you, Coach. Would you mind talking about some of the local talent that did sign today on National Signing Day? Well, we got Dakota Bill uh, out of McKinleyville High School. Uh, Dakota, uh, I've, I've watched him grow up. Uh, he and my son, Jared, are the same age, have played together since uh, youth ball. Uh, and and uh, it, it's always, you know, I, I learned a long time ago how important it was to, to recruit locally. You know, when I first got here, the first question and the most frequent question I was asked was, you got any local town, you got anybody coming locally type thing. So to have Dakota from McKinleyville, uh, McKinleyville High come is, is, is great. Uh, to have him join us, we have Mike Mazzocco uh, out of uh, College of the Redwoods also. And uh, another offensive lineman that, uh, that we've gotten to know through the recruiting process and real excited to, to have him join us. So again, they're just two of, uh, of a class that we, we are very, very excited about. Coach, before we let you go, do you have any final thoughts about today's signing class? I do want to announce that we uh, hired Coach Barry Sachs as our, our new defensive coordinator. Uh, Coach Sachs will be here starting on Monday. And excited, Coach Sachs comes with tremendous uh, experience. Uh, he's coached uh, 11 years, I think it is, over at the University of Nevada, both as D-line coach and defensive coordinator. Uh, he's coached most recently, was part of the staff at San Jose State this past season at University of New Mexico. Uh, he spent a year at the University of California as a defensive line coach. Tremendously well thought of in our profession. Uh, comes with tremendous recruiting contacts throughout the state of California and, and throughout the West, really. And uh, just excited to welcome Coach Sachs to our, to our team starting on Monday. Thank you, Coach. We appreciate your time. Thank you.